Well, greetings and welcome to the workshop. Today, I am gonna to talk to you about some tips and tricks on everything I know about the scroll saw to help you quickly become a pro scroller. I have spent over a decade building my business based completely around this tool. So whether you're trying to start a business of your own, maybe just be a hobbyist or just learn a new tool, a scroll saw is a great place to start. Since there are so many tips and tricks to cover, I'm actually gonna break this into three separate videos. First, and today's video is gonna be all about making sure you know how to pick the scroll saw that's right for you. The second video is gonna be all about blades. What type of blades are there? What type of blades you should use? And where can you find these to give you the best product possible? And third and finally, some tips and tricks that you need to know to help you become a scroller quickly and efficiently as well, some common techniques that you can use. And just so you know, if you are interested in turning this into a business of your own, I do have links in the description talking about other videos I put out on how to actually turn your passion into your own woodworking business. And finally, I just need to put it out there, all of these are my opinions and they are my own thoughts. So. I tell you all this with a little over 14 years experience having my own woodworking business. So hopefully you can find some of this information helpful and definitely leave me some comments below if you do, or actually even if you disagree with me, or even maybe have some questions that I may have not answered. If you leave me a comment, I will answer you. But with that, let's get into it. Let's start things off with the most important question. What kind of saw should you buy and what is worth your money? I like to answer that question with a basic fundamental statement. You typically get what you pay for. Now, if you want, you can go spend a hundred dollars at Harbor Freight today and find yourself a cheap scroll saw and start scrolling. Or you can go in the other direction and spend more than a thousand dollars on some really fancy uh, Pegasus or Hegner brand. And you might be asking yourself, well, what is the difference between a $100 saw and a $1,500 saw? And usually the number one difference is vibration and quality of build. Sure, a $100 saw is gonna get you started, but there's typically a lot of vibration in there, whereas a $1,500 saw is gonna be tend to be heavier duty, a bigger or better quality motor, and a deeper throat. When I say deeper throat, what I mean is the distance between where your saw blade is and the back of the saw. The amount of space I need to move a piece around the blade. So ultimately, you gotta ask yourself, do you need to spend $1,000 on a brand new saw to make life worth it for you? And the short answer is no. I personally love my DeWalt 788 variable speed scroll saw. This has a 20 inch throat. Like I say, it's 20 inches from the blade to the back of the saw itself. It has a variable speed controller. Variable speed means that I can adjust the speed of the blade. This saw will actually adjust from 400 to about 1750 strokes per minute, which is extremely important depending on what type of scrolling you're doing. The 788 runs about $500 and you can get it at your Rocklers or Woodcrafts or even most big box stores. Um, I have seen it on sale for as cheap as 380. So you just gotta keep your eyes peeled. But why exactly do I love this particular scroll saw? Well, let me get into it. First, the 20 inch throat depth is gonna cover about 99% of every type of project I have ever wanted to do. The table itself is heavy cast iron, which that means lower vibration, which is easier on you as a scroller, and it's gonna lead to longer life for the tool itself. Seriously, I love the beefiness of this table and it cuts just as well to me with as little vibration as the more expensive scroll saws that are out on the market. But the other thing I really love are the quick release clamps for your blades. <laughs> Listen, if you take anything from this video, it's this. Saws that allow for a quick, toolless blade change and take a pinless blade are a non-negotiable for me. The first time you attempt any fretwork and have used tools that don't have that easy access to release or attach the blade, you're gonna curse a lot. 
all these saws will have a lever to actually tension the blade itself, but I'll talk more on how to correctly tension a blade in parts two and three of this series. But back to durability. A fundamental question that you have to ask yourself is how long are you actually going to be using the machine every single week? This is an extremely important question because it's all about how much are you willing to pay for a machine up front versus what you're going to truly pay for the machine over the lifetime of its use. But getting back to the 788 or scroll saws in this similar category, these motors are rated for just under 3000 hours. So if you do the math, that roughly translates into you on this scroll saw nonstop 40 hours a week for around 18 months. What that really means realistically for the amount you're actually on the machine, it translates into years and years of worry-free use. And when something does break, it's typically a bushing or a bearing, and that's something that you can fix yourself. Now, if the motor does go out, I will tell you I've had two go out on me in about, what's that, 12 years. The replacement motor cost was about $300. And I know that sounds like a lot, but two motors, that's $600, that's $1,100. That total investment that I have in over a decade of use is still less than the $1,500 Hager that you can find online. I think it's money well spent. But if you truly think you are gonna be spending 40 plus hours a week using this machine, the machine running, you may consider this when buying a scroll saw and upgrading to a beefier machine like a Pegasus. But Steve, but Steve, I love Hawks and Excaliburs. Tell me about those. Come here, come here. I'm going to tell you, just no, no. I can't justifiably recommend those scroll saws to you for what they cost. I have used both of those machines and I'm going to tell you, I don't love them. I don't think the vibration is fantastic in those. I don't think the tooling is good. And even though the motors are a little bit beefier, I don't think they're worth the bang for its buck. Bottom line is what I'm trying to tell you is you do not need to break the bank when buying a scroll saw. You need to do your research and you may not wanna buy the cheapest $100 scroll saw that's out there. But again, you don't also have to pay thousands to get a quality product. Finally, a note on this 788, when you buy it new out of the box, it does also come with a three year warranty. So that first motor that I burned out within the first three years, it was actually covered, so I didn't spend a penny on it. And I even read an article recently this year uh, that Bob Vila said that this was the best overall scroll saw for what you're gonna pay. So if you don't believe me, I guess, you know, trust Bob. And finally, I will say, if you are just not a fan of DeWalt, which people are pretty territorial when it comes to their brands, if you just do not like DeWalt, I will tell you my second favorite scroll saw is the 20 inch Delta 694. That is um, pretty much a twin sister to the DeWalt. It's got similar specs, similar motor, simple, uh, similar life cycle. Bottom line is it's basically, it's just not the DeWalt. As I said in the beginning of this video, these are my opinions and I, you can clearly see where I gravitate to, but um, I wanna know your thoughts. Leave a comment below, you know, do you agree with me? Was this a valuable purchase for you? Or did you love your Excalibur or Hawk scroll saw? Leave that comment too. And let me know not only why you loved it, but what other terrible decisions did you make in life? Leave that as well. Buying the right scroll saw is definitely vital to you and your business model or your hobby or your joy. Buy something that is heavy duty enough to give you the pleasure of a good cut, but not too much where you can't afford to buy any other tool. And with that, like I say, I appreciate you coming along. Make sure you stay in for this series. I'm going to talk about blades on the next one and we'll get more in depth with that. And hopefully by the time all is said and done, you too will be a pro scroller. Till then though, I'll catch you on the next one.